Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Naya Colored Enchantment deck titled Runestorm as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. It's a deck built around the new rune mechanic from Kaldheim, and one of the centerpieces of the deck is Runeforge Champion, a 3 mana 2 3 dwarf warrior that when it enters a battlefield lets us search our library and or graveyard for a rune card, reveal it and put it into our hand. And then we can also pay just one generic mana rather than paying the mana cost for rune spells we cast. So let's take a look at all these rune cards. They all cost 2 mana, they are enchantment auras with a rune subtype, and they can enchant any permanent, including our lands if we wanted to, and when the runes enter the battlefield they draw a card, and in the case of a rune of might, if the enchanted permanent is a creature it gets plus 1 plus 1 and has trample. We also have 4 copies of a rune of speed, giving the enchanted creature plus 1 plus 0 and haste, and a rune of sustenance which gives a lifelink. They can also enchant equipment and translate those abilities over to the equipment, although we're not playing any equipment in this deck. So our Runeforge champion can search up any of our runes depending on the situation and then those runes will draw a card. So Runeforge champion provides a little bit of card advantage. Then things get even crazier if we happen to have a Transcendent Envoy in play, a 2 mana 1 to enchantment creature griffin with flying, saying aura spells we cast cost 1 generic mana less to cast because first off our champion gives our runes a discount making them just cost 1 generic mana and then Envoy gives us a 1 mana discount so we can now cast our runes for free the runes draw a card when they enter the battlefield, so we can very easily chain a whole bunch of runes together and get all those different bonuses. Now things get even crazier if we also have a Satessan Champion in play at the same time, a 3 mana 1 3 human warrior with constellation saying whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under our control we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Satessan Champion and we get to draw a card. So now all of a sudden we're casting our runes for free, we're drawing cards with the runes entering the battlefield, we're drawing extra cards with Satessan Champion and we're increasing power and toughness with the runes abilities and with all those plus one counters on Satessan Champion. Then we also have two copies of Burgi, God of Storytelling, which does a similar job to Transcendent Envoy as a 3 mana 3-3 three, three legendary creature god, saying whenever we cast a spell we can add a red mana to our mana pool and until end of turn we don't lose this mana as steps and phases end. So if we don't have Envoy in play but instead have Burgi plus Runeforge Champion we can still cast all the runes we want since we can cast them for one mana and then get a refund for one red mana from Burgi so we can still keep casting all the runes we want and if we also happen to have our envoy in play at the same time we now start generating red mana for each rune we cast so that's quite interesting as well and we also have the option of casting Hornfell Horn of Bounty the 5 mana legendary artifact that lets us discard a card and then exile the top 2 cards of our library that we can play until end of turn so if we already have all the mana generation we need we can instead use Horn of Bounty for additional card advantage maybe get rid of lands we don't need to hopefully draw into more action and then we also have the full playset of Goldspan Dragon as another threat, a 5 mana for 4 dragon with flying and haste, and whenever Goldspan Dragon attacks or becomes the target of a spell, we create a treasure token, so that also includes targeting our Goldspan Dragon with our different runes, and treasures we control have the ability to tap and sacrifice to add 2 mana of any one color to our mana pool, so we can now very easily start casting all the runes on our Goldspan Dragon instead of somewhere else, start generating extra treasure tokens which means more mana, which lets us cast more spells and we can very quickly combo off and potentially play half of our deck in one turn. And then finally the glue that holds this entire deck together are four copies of Showdown of the Skulls, a four mana saga that on the first chapter exiles the top four cards of our library and until the end of our next turn we can play those cards. So Showdown potentially provides a ton of card advantage and pairs quite nicely with all these cost reduction cards like Burgi, adding red mana and Transcendent Envoy as it becomes much easier to cast all those spells in time. And then on the second and third chapters whenever we cast a spell this turn we can put a plus one plus one counter on target creature we control, so this also pairs quite nicely with casting a whole bunch of runes since those will translate into additional plus one plus one counters so we can very quickly make a giant threat out of nowhere. And then to combo with our showdown we also have two copies of Shepherd of the Flock which can use the one mana Usher to safety adventure first to return target permanent we control to its owner's hand so we can pick up our showdown again before it goes away on the third chapter so we can replay it and get more value and then also gives us a 3-1 creature afterwards. So our deck is maybe a little bit slow to get going and get all these different engines online but as soon as we get to turn 5, turn 6 our deck starts doing some pretty ridiculous things and thanks to all these extra mana engines and 
hard draw engines, we can very quickly deploy our hand and potentially win in just one or two attacks. And then going over our mana base, we've got our four copies of Fabled Passage, alongside two plains, two mountain and two forests, and then all 12 pathways in the Naya Colors, as well as two copies of Temple of Triumph to round out our mana base. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. We're maybe missing a card draw engine if we decide to play Burgi as a creature. This can fetch a planes. And then could decide to run out Shepherd turn two. Although against the Zagoth Mamba maybe that's not the best idea. So your opponent on a black mutate deck. Runeforge champion, excellent draw. So yeah, we'll hold on to both the Rune and Shepherd for now. Turn 3, maybe play Burgi, and then turn 4, play Champion, make a red mana, cast a Rune of Sustenance, take it from there. Play Burgi. And hope we get to untap with our god of storytelling. Scute Swarm, that's fine. And Envoy. Alright, I think we still stick to the plan of champion. Could get our haste rune. Don't hate that idea. And then we'll target our champion. Hit our land drop. So we can also use Shepherd to potentially pick up a rune again. Or I can cast my Envoy. And then cast these for free, and who knows where we'll end up. Alright, probably just rune champion. Alright, more runes. If we hit another one, we can potentially play our Goldspan Dragon here, which would be excellent. Alright. Kind of fizzled out here, but that's okay. Get to play our Dragon next turn. And then we would love to find, like, a Showdown of the Skulls. It's okay if the Envoy dies. Could have maybe saved it by putting a Rune of Might on it. From the minus two, minus two. Alright. Murder Strider takes out Champion. That's fine. Ooh, nice showdown. And we even have Shepherd in hand, so this is going to be excellent. For now, probably still play Goldspan first. These get to attack. And then... Could play Envoy, although I think I'd rather just keep up Shepherd in case they try and kill the dragon, and we could save it. Seems fine to me. And then next turn we should be able to combo off easily, even if something bad happens to my dragon. Lurker gets back something from the graveyard. Envoy down, that's fine. Opponent still facing a 4 4 flyer here at 5 life, so it doesn't take much to kill our opponent here. Alright, time for showdown. And that should do it. We can play a Runeforge Champion. Which can get a green rune. Probably should have fetched the one in our graveyard instead, but that's fine. Play Envoy. And then we get to play some free runes. Make some more mana. 
play another showdown if I wanted to. Although my point is just that to the rune of might we have in hand, so no need to extend the opponent's suffering. But yeah, you can see how we could just keep going here with showdown and more runes. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a decent hand. We can turn 3 Burgi, turn 4 maybe Champion plus Rune of Sustenance to draw a card right away. So we want to fetch up a Forest facing an Usher of the Fallen, so an aggressive white creature deck. Going to be under quite a bit of pressure here, being on the draw, not making a play until turn 3 essentially. Speaker of the Heavens. So... Fable Passage implies a second color. Could be maybe black white. And we'll get a forest. Alright, blue white instead. Get this temple out of the way. And another Satessan champion. Is that a good thing? Yeah, I guess so. Can maybe wait until turn 5 to play my Rune of Sustenance and play another Citizen Champion first. Alright, never mind. Overwhelmed Apprentice is gonna mill it. So I guess this is a party deck. They've got Warrior, Cleric, and Wizard. So, I'm gonna wait and see which party payoff cards they have. Usher makes a token, and we'll play Burgi. And the next turn, can play Satessan Champion, make a red mana, and then cast a Rune of Sustenance for one and white. So just gotta make sure we tap our mana properly. And then Goldspan can follow up and take over the skies. Looks like we're counting something. Nimble Trap Finder. Yeah, that's a good one. It's gonna allow the opponent to draw a ton of cards. And they're going quite wide. So we won't be able to block too many creatures. Expect them to attack with everyone. And then these are human warriors. So if we want to take them off party, I probably don't want to block Usher or the token. Instead, block the wizard or the cleric, which makes more sense. Linvala is a wizard in a blue-white party deck, so maybe cleric is a creature type they're gonna have a harder time getting, although they probably have four of the one-drop that uh, also functions with party. Hallowblade, another warrior. Alright, so we'll fetch, thin out the deck a little bit, probably grab another forest. And then probably enchant Burgi, that way if they have Journey to Oblivion for champion, I still have a champion in play. Alright, so we're flooding a little bit here, but if we play Horn we can make use of those extra lands to draw additional cards essentially. So our opponent currently doesn't have a full party. Although there's green mana, so... Spoils of Adventure can maybe find a Changeling to complete the opponent's party. There's Journey. Gets rid of Burgi. But at least our opponent is not drawing any extra cards here. Block Trap Finder.
And another rune of sustenance is excellent. So now what? I could play Goldspan, attack, and then play Rune of Sustenance on champion second main. Don't hate that idea. It does lose to another Journey to Oblivion, though. Alternatively, I can just play Burgi, and then Rune of Sustenance, Adescent champion. If I attack, I hit for 3, up to 7, which still loses to Journey to Oblivion on Burgi. So if that's the case... I think I like Goldspan, Attack, and Rune. Could also Goldspan stay on defense. If I do that, and they remove one of my blockers, block here, then I'm still dead. So yeah, I'm losing to another journey anyway. So I think we'll go with this. So if we survive this next turn, I think we'll be in reasonable shape. But that's a big if. Speaker of the Heavens, so that's Cleric. And Limvala. So, still missing Rogue. Usher, another Warrior. Tanks with all. Block here, try and absorb as much damage as possible. And then we'll gain three, so we're not dead. Limvala sacrifices, not sure why. Opponent's creatures are indestructible and our opponent passes. Might have been a misclick, although I think we would have been fine regardless. So play Envoy, keeping up. I guess we can play Burgi first. Although I don't have a Runeforge champion, so colors are going to be kind of the limiting factor. Although I can just enchant my gold span here. So, yeah, we'll play Envoy. And then we'll start enchanting the gold span. Another rune. So we'll put sustenance on the dragon and then maybe I'll still play Burgi here to generate extra mana depending on what we draw another gold span so yeah I think I wait on playing Burgi and see what we uh, draw first since it doesn't look like mana is going to be the limiting factor but maybe spells More gold spans. So if I were to play Burgi now and play Rune, is that worth it? Probably not. Another Rune. Horn could also be great here, to be honest, since we've got so many cards in hand. And we can probably just draw all the runes in our deck. And it's also more fun. So let's do this. Let's find all the runes. Ah, there's another one. So I'll need some green mana. So this is why the deck is called Runestorm, as we're storming off here. Draw some more. Alright, those are a little pricey. I guess we'll uh, just play this one for now.
and my opponent has seen enough. Yeah, we could also play Runeforge Champion, search up a rune and cast it, so there were a lot of options available here. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, the sand looks pretty decent. Could use an actual card draw engine, like Stas and Champion, Showdown of the Skulls. But we do have the mana discounts here. So that's gonna give us a nice, smooth draw. Facing maybe a snow deck. Sultai colored. A Mar Triton gonna mill for two. So they probably have some zombie synergies. Ooh, and there's a Tessan champion. I'm still gonna play Burgi here. And then next turn we get to play Satessan champion and follow it up with at least one rune. Sadly, don't have the red rune, which could have guaranteed an extra one. They could have the snow fight spell, which kills Burgi, but that's okay. Because then we could still go champion plus a rune. Ooh, and a runeforge champion. All right, change of plans. We're gonna champion, get rune of uh, speed here. And then next turn we'll play Citas and Champion and combo off. Alternatively, I could play free Rune of Speed here, which will give me the third mana for Citas and Champion, and then I can still double Rune. I guess that's good enough. So I have to play this one. So we have green mana. I can give Champion haste, but I don't think we'll be attacking into the Mire Triton. So might as well do this. Champion, cast some free runes. Also making mana, although I'm not sure if we'll be able to use it. Another Satessan champion, just in case. All right, back up Burgi, although didn't think we'll need it. I guess I can attack, and if they trade, I can just play another one. Seems fine, actually. Since the floating mana doesn't go away until end of turn. Well, that was an above average turn, I would say. And next turn we can maybe combo off with another Satessan champion. Alright, binding, gonna kill the first one. That's acceptable. So, champion number two. Probably want to keep white mana untapped. Play a rune. Another Satessan champion. So, if I play champion, I can use Shepherd to pick up one of my runes. Uh, that seems decent. So make sure to click one of our runes here. Probably a rune of speed. So we can move it to somewhere else. And then cast this for free and draw a bunch of cards. Another rune of speed. Alright, sadly no more runes. But a healthy attack. And next turn we get to play another runeforge champion. Bones at four after chumping. And I don't think they'll be able to cast a sweeper that's too backbreaking. I guess never mind. Extinction event on odd would be pretty strong here. Although would still give us lethal for next turn. As we can runeforge champion for the green rune to put on envoy. 
All right, and our opponent explodes. So a nice showing here of the deck, even without showdown. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, and yeah, our hand seems quite good. Facing a Lurus of the Dream Den deck. Have the option of playing Shepherd on two, but most likely gonna try and keep it to return Showdown of the Skulls back to our hands and get infinite value. And picked up our Transcendence Envoy, so... Let's see, I can fetch. Doesn't really matter since we've got all the colors here. But typically speaking, our deck is more in need of double red and double white than double green. So I guess leaving the extra mountain and planes in the deck is better, so I should fetch up a forest. I guess it makes sense. And then play Envoy. Alternatively, I guess just fetching a mountain so that if we did draw another planes, we could have had double red with pathway maybe made more sense although it shouldn't matter too much fisher wizard so maybe a party deck of some type red black yeah as we see malakir blood priest so do we tap out for satessan champion it might die before we get any value but with showdown in hand i don't think we really mind Since we'll get infinite value here in a second. Alright, feed the swarm takes care of it. Also would have been an answer to our enchantment. So yeah, I think it's time for showdown. It's not ideal since we've already played land for the turn. But so it goes. Would have loved to find a runeforged champion, but Burgi is quite good too. Another Fisher Wizard. Gets rid of Archfiend's Vessel, which they can maybe reanimate to turn into a 5-5 Demon. So if I want to play the second showdown, we don't get to play Burgi. I think we need to get Burgi in play just to generate a bit of extra mana here. Croxa is acceptable. One Rune of Sustenance can maybe go. Alright. Time to storm off here. So we do have to be a little bit careful with which colors we use since... We don't have champion in play to take care of that. So if I play Burgi, probably not going to need more red mana. Yeah, I guess I'll still get a mountain and then just tap double red and white to play this. Get a bunch of counters. Can make a hasty burgy. And then I guess we'll trample burgy here. Alright, more runes. Guess we'll spread out the wealth a little bit. And there's champion for next turn. And then if I put a stop before the saga goes away, we can still bounce it with Shepard. So in response to the trigger of the third chapter, we want to bounce it. Because once the trigger resolves, the saga gets sacrificed. 
So our opponent's at three and concedes before we could even get to that stage. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a decent looking hand. Temple probably just looking for an extra land. And then we've got Champion into maybe Showdown on four. Although we could also potentially save Showdown for later, since it is more effective if we can also play additional lands the same turn we play it. Probably can turn down Runeforge Champion. So we'll see which one we want to play first. If we Runeforge on three, then on turn four we could potentially go Citizen Champion plus Rune of Might in the same turn. If we have land four, putting it on a black green, maybe elf deck. Probably want to get Mountain, so we have double red for gold span. All right. Yeah, I think we'll play Runeforge here. And then I guess I'll get Lifelink, so we have all three. And then hope to draw an untapped land, so we can play Satassin Champion and the Rune. All right, so I'm some with the Shapeshifter, so maybe there's some party synergies there. All right, perfect. So a Satasan Champion into... This can probably be green. And then I guess we'll give it Hastes. And given that we have Lifelink, I'm okay racing. Next turn we can play Goldspan and then potentially play some runes afterwards. Another Gladewalker. They might have the enchantment here. Yep, there it is. Journey to Oblivion. Exiles Satas and Champion. That's okay. So now the question is Do I play Goldspan? And how do we sequence our runes? I guess we'll play Goldspan. Attack to make a treasure, keeping champion back. And then can play Rune of Sustenance targeting Goldspan. See what we draw. And then maybe put a Rune of Sustenance on the Runeforged Champion here. And then just pass and keep the other runes for next turn. That seems okay. Could play Envoy and then play these runes for free. I guess that's tempting. Sure. Just make more blockers here. And then showdown next turn. Could also put another rune of sustenance on Goldspan. But this seems fine. So yeah, I guess I could have put rune of might on Goldspan to generate more mana. And then I would have maybe been able to play another envoy as an extra blocker. But I think this is a good spread of our wealth. And then next turn showdown can draw us into more action and can hopefully just end the game on the spot. Opponent attacks with all. Well, I'm gonna block. They might have some sort of anthem effect or sweeper, but... I guess if they have like the black sweeper that ignores a certain creature type, that would have killed these anyway. So I'm not sure what to play around here. Masked Vandal, fair enough. So they needed a creature in graveyard for that to work. Alright, time for showdown, keeping up. Uh, do we have green mana here? We don't. So I guess we'll keep forest untapped. Oh, 
All right, more stuff. So we can play Rune on the gold span for one mana, make a treasure as our opponent explodes, and then potentially play another Runeforge champion, and we should have been in a pretty good position. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a hand that's missing a card draw engine, really, unless we plan to play Horn at five, but that's probably going to be too slow. I think we can take a mulligan. All right, this is better. We've got Sadescent Champion. Probably just ditch the gold span and then hope to eventually find another one. We've got all three colors. Gotta hope Sadescent Champion survives. Play Temple for now. Shepherd's not incredibly useful right now. Would love to find a showdown of the Skulls in case something bad happens to Satessan Champion. Another Satessan Champion would be good. As we're facing the Death Touch deck. Yeah, I mean, just gonna play a Champion and hope it survives. And then next turn we can play two runes. Against the Death Touch deck, we're gonna have to eventually fly over with our Goldspan Dragon, since the ground's gonna be pretty stalled. And then we'll have to try and find a way to trade for Finn, which otherwise threatens to poison us to death. So we'll take the two poison. If our opponent has a ram through, they can kill champion at instant speed, so actually drawing the runeforged champion is quite useful here. So we'll play that. Yeah, our opponent definitely has a ram through in hand. So Sadescent Champion's gonna die. They might kill it now, before we get a chance to cast an enchantment targeting Runeforged Champion. Although honestly, I could also enchant my land. Because if they ram through in response to me enchanting my creature, then the enchantment never enters the battlefield and we don't get to trigger Constellation. Whereas if I enchant a land, then we still get a Constellation trigger at least. I'll get a Rune of Might, I think. And then... Probably just put a Rune of Sustenance on a land here, since Lifelink is probably not gonna matter against a Death Touch deck anyway. And then I guess they'll end up killing Sadescent Champion anyway here. Nope, they don't. Alright. And of course now we get to still draw a card from the rune, whereas if we put it on the champion and they killed it in response, we do not get to draw a card. There's an argument for putting the enchantment on the runeforged champion, and then if they kill it, at least we still have a Satessan champion in play. So there's a few ways to approach it, but I think this is okay. Hit for two, and then next turn we can play Goldspan, attack, maybe second main, play a bunch more runes. So no ram through from the opponent end of turn. And now Tejuru Blind Blade, 1-1 one, one Death Touch. Take two more poison. Alright, opponent passes once again with three mana up. Burgi is interesting since playing Horn could let us combo off here. But I think just playing a dragon and smashing is the way to go. Just sit for four, keep our other creatures back. And then there's probably no need for me to play any runes second main. We'll just wait until next turn to potentially combo off. So yeah, it appears like they just don't have any removal here or they're just being very patient. I'll take the two poison and then there's a high likelihood that we can kill them next turn. So we're up to 8. And our opponent passes with 5 mana up. So not sure what's going on. Um, I guess they're just being patient and maybe holding double removal spell up here. 
So this might be a game where we need to play Horn to draw more action. Maybe I should just start by putting the rune on the dragon here and see if they have a response. They don't. Envoy means I can play things for free. Are they finally going to kill Satassin Champion? Nope. Could play another gold span, but I kind of want to wait until we can play Horn. This generates more mana. Still nothing from our opponents. Get to draw two. Showdown is excellent. Alright, so we should be able to pretty much draw our entire deck at this point. Get rid of some lanes, see what we draw. Can play a land and fetch. How about a Rune of Speed on the gold span still? Make more treasure. Could maybe play another gold span to diversify our threats a little bit. Although if I play gold span, I guess that's still okay since we'll have the treasures required to keep comboing. Sure. All right. How about a Rune of Might? Can play another Satessin Champion. Make more treasure. Draw more cards. Try and find all the runes. There's one. Just start diversifying our threats a little bit. In case they can somehow deal with the dragon. Another rune. Just have to be careful that we don't end up decking somehow. There's another dragon. What else can we get rid of? Probably don't need showdown anymore. Another rune. Ten cards remain. Alright, so even if they have double removal spell here, although I doubt it at this point, they should still be dead. We'll give this haste. Alright, I think we're good. Move to combats. Do I have to play around a fog effect? Are there even fog effects in standard? I guess I could leave these two back just in case. And then if they kill my two biggest creatures, they're still dead. Plus I can still play some stuff second main with all the extra treasures. 
All right. Snakeskin Veil targeting Finn, so that's what they were holding. Fair enough. All right, well, we got to storm off here against Blank Green Death Touch. Thought they might have a removal spell, but I guess after a while it became clear that they didn't. All right, so we got to see our deck in action in a variety of matchups. Maybe didn't face the top tier decks and standard at the moment, but we did get to see what the deck is capable of once it starts assembling some of its combo pieces and starts generating card advantage, drawing extra cards, generating extra mana, and putting that all together in one big explosive turn. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.